Hey Brewers, today we are going to do a complete brew day on the new Brewzilla Generation 4. This is the 110 volt 35 liter version. We're going to cover uh, mashing the grains, sparging, boiling, chilling, all the way till it's ready to go into your fermenter. On this unit here, I do have an insulating jacket. They're not included. They cost about 30 Canadian dollars. I find they're worth it. Keeps your temperature while you're mashing a little bit more stable and it helps bring it to a boil a little bit quicker. Also, if you happen to touch it, it's uh, not hot at all. The first thing you're gonna wanna do is make sure that your false bottom is in here, which I've already done. And then you will add in your mash water. I can't tell you how much mash water to use. This is gonna depend entirely on your recipe and batch size. The more grains that you use, the more water you're gonna need because the grains are gonna absorb some of that water. But what I've done is I've added 5.25 US gallons, which is uh, just over 19 liters. Once that was done, uh, I used a Camden tablet to get rid of the chlorine. The neat thing with the new Bruzilla is you can control it uh, using an app called Rapt, R-A-P-T, on your phone, it's Wi-Fi. So you can control it from anywhere. You don't have to be in the same building as your, your unit. So I'm gonna go over that in more detail in a different video. For today, we'll just use the manual controller here. So it's pretty simple. Starting on the top left, this is your pump on and off. So I always have the ball valve closed just in case I hit that by accident, no hot water or work's gonna come out. Uh, on the bottom of that, you have uh, up and down arrows. This is just gonna change your mass, mash temperature, which today I wanna mash at 150. So here's the play pause. This is what you use to start or stop your heating. Uh, this is the back button, so we won't use that right now. This gets you into your settings. You can navigate the menu which again, we're gonna go into more detail on this on a later video. So that's pretty much it. Add in your water, set your mash temperature, hit play, and then just wait for it to get to the temperature you want. I usually heat to about two Fahrenheit higher than what I wanna mash at, so that when I add my grains, the temperature's gonna lower and I'll be closer to what I actually wanna mash at. So take off the lid. Put that somewhere where I won't lose it and we'll put in the grain basket. So if you haven't seen the new Gen 4 grain basket, there's no more uh, that center overflow pipe anymore. And also notice the perforated sides. This will help the mash flow a lot better from my experience. All right, now we're ready to put in our grains. I'm gonna put the recirculation arm here. So today we are gonna brew a cold IPA because I haven't really messed around with that style before. So it's a very simple grain bill, 80% uh, Pilsner malt, 20% corn. Some people use rice, some people use a mixture of both. So this is a five and a half gallon batch or around 21 liters. I have 10 pounds of uh, a good Weirman German Pilsner and two pounds of flake corn. So we'll go ahead and uh, start adding that to the Brusilla. Just gonna open up the ball valve a little bit and start it recirculating. So you wanna pour it in nice and slow. Then when you notice it start to kind of clump up like that, grab yourself, preferably a metal mash paddle. You can use a plastic spoon, but when these things heat up, they get really like pliable and they don't get the dough balls as well, so I don't use it. All right, so no, no clumping going on there. And if you find it's starting to get really thick, you can always take the, uh, the water that's recirculating and just put it up on the top there. This is going pretty good so far. Ah, f oh, oh, uh oh, okay, okay. Well, uh, we got a little bit of a fucked up Friday here. Not what I was intending to show you, but uh, cold water in of our chiller has let go. We're just checking for dough balls. Going all over, that's looking pretty good. They usually mash pretty thin. 
I'll use something like Brewfather or Beersmith to calculate my mash and sparge. And I'll take usually about a half gallon or around two or three liters out of the sparge and actually add it into my mash water. All right, there's all our grain. Again, just stir it in real good. Going down all the way to the bottom, right to the bottom plate, making sure there's no pesky dough balls down there. All right, I feel that's really nicely mixed. There shouldn't be any dough balls. There's two ways you can do this. This thing comes with a top plate that will go inside and sit on top of your grains. I don't really see the point of this. Uh, back when it used to have the overflow pipe, this would stop grain from coming up and going down the, uh, the center pipe. That doesn't exist anymore. So I've only done one brew using the Gen 4, and when I added it, it just fell down, and I found it just compacted my grains. Your results may vary, so you know, try it with and without, and see what works best for you. For me, I personally, I hate this thing. So we're gonna go without it. It also allows you to stir the grains easily during the mash. I typically like to stir it after about 15 minutes, and then I'll stir it again around the 40 minute mark, just to make sure you're getting nice, even uh, temperature throughout. And uh, I find I just get better efficiency. Uh, I usually have no problem getting around 80% uh, on a Brazilla when I do that. Okay, just one last check just to be sure it looks good. I'm gonna turn off the pump for a sec. Put the lid on. All right, and then I'll start the pump again. Now you don't need it to be going full bore. I usually go maybe about halfway or so. So there you have it. We're gonna let it mash for 60 minutes. While that's happening, I'm gonna get my sparge water, which I believe for this recipe was around two and a half gallons. So 10, 12 liters, somewhere around there. Uh, I'm gonna heat that up to about 170 Fahrenheit. And uh, once the one hour mash is done, we'll use that to sparge. If you can't easily heat up your sparge water, you don't have to. I know tons of people who just use whatever room temperature water they have kicking around and it works fine. It's just the colder the water you sparge with, the longer it's gonna take to get up to a boil. Some people say you won't get as good efficiency when you're sparging with room temperature water or whatever, but I haven't really found that to be the case. So. Do whatever works for you. So we're gonna let this go for an hour and come back. Okay, so we're about 15 minutes into the mash. I'm just gonna give it a quick stir. Again, not everybody does this. I just find I get a little bit better efficiency uh, if I give it a couple stirs during the one hour mash. So I'm just going all the way to the bottom, bringing the grains back up to the top, giving it a stir, nothing too crazy. That's it, we'll just put our lid back on and then get our pump started. Okay, so we're at the end of our 60 minute mash. Two things you can do here, pull up the grain basket and start sparging, or you can do a mash out. I do them most of the time, but not always. Um, it's just so easy to do with something like the Brusilla. So all you gotta do is, uh, you know, pause your brew system and then just raise your mash temperature to 168 Fahrenheit. Start it up, start your recirculation, and then just wait for it to get to 168. So we're gonna go ahead and do that, and then we'll come back and start with the sparge. Okay, so we've reached a 168 Fahrenheit mash out temperature. So I'm gonna go ahead and pause it, turn off the pump. I'm gonna want to get this out of the way. Let's just lift one of the cam locks and then you can clamp it back down. Take off the lid put it somewhere where you're not gonna step on it. Mash basket handle. You're just gonna pull up. And this, uh, the new design of the, the grain basket or malt pipe, whatever you wanna call it, has two sets of feet. 
So you can lift it up halfway, because it's pretty heavy right now. It's full of, you know, water and grains. You lift up halfway, let it drain a bit, and then lift it all the way up. So that's using the halfway feet. They're just resting on the inside. Uh, there's some uh, metal bars that it rests on. So I'm gonna let that drain a little bit, and then I'm gonna lift it up again so we can finish the sparge. So most of the wort is out of the grain basket and into the Brusilla boiler. So I'm gonna lift it up the rest of the way. And we're gonna take our sparge water now. And just pour it over the top of the grains. Some people have really elaborate sparge systems or pour the water in really slowly. I kind of just dump it in uh, a pitcher full at a time. I don't really pay too much attention to it. And uh, I seem to get, like I said earlier, around 80% mash efficiency using uh, the Brusillas. And also one thing I forgot, once you have this lifted up, you can uh, set it to a boil. Just hold that up button. Yes, yeah, whatever, 224. As long as it's at 212 or higher, push play. You see that little fire icon come, so we know it's heating. And now we'll just wait for the sparge to, uh, the sparge water to finish dripping through, and uh, we'll get to a boil, and we'll come back. So we're at a boil. So as you can see, I removed the grain basket. Even though it wasn't dripping much, you want to either discard the grain right away or put it in a bucket or something or else it's going to make a mess if you just put it on your floor and leave it there. One thing that I do, even though there's a spigot on these units, I always use the pump to go into my fermenter. So because I do that, I just leave it inside of the Brusilla while it's boiling. That way it's getting sterilized. I also like to stir the wort when it's chilling. So I'll just leave my stainless steel mash paddle in there while it's boiling, again for sanitation. So while it's chilling, I'll be able to use this to kind of and Whirlpool. Um, this recipe is pretty straightforward. Uh, we're doing one ounce of Simcoe, boiling it for 30 minutes. And then at the end of that 30 minutes, we're gonna chill to about 180 Fahrenheit. And then I got an ounce each of uh, Denali Azaka Simcoe. We're gonna let that steep for 20 minutes. And then we'll chill it down to uh, about 65 Fahrenheit or so. And uh, ferment it with W3470 around, uh, you know, 65. Fahrenheit, somewhere around there. Uh, and then three days before I'm gonna package this beer, I'm gonna add another ounce of Denali, Azaka, and Simcoe. Uh, so for right now, a lot of recipes will have a 60 minute bittering addition. Uh, this one is just gonna have a 30 minute bittering addition. So we're gonna toss that in there. I find the false bottom does a good job at blocking you know, hop chunks and stuff like that. Uh, so I'm just gonna throw these in without using a hop spider. And then at the end, we can see if the false bottom does a good job at you know preventing the, the uh, pump from plugging up or getting a bunch of hop chunks into your fermenter. So yeah, 30 minutes, and then we'll be back to chill and steep the uh, Whirlpool hops. Okay, so we've reached the end of our timer here. So we're gonna go ahead and push pause to turn off the heating element. I'm gonna turn on my pump. the ball valve up, away we go. I put in my chiller with 10 minutes left in the boil just to uh, you know help sanitize it. It was clean previously, but hey, you can't be too careful. So that's in there, I got my pump running. We have it on pause so it's not trying to heat up. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, turn on the cold water to our immersion chiller. Actually, I'm gonna set our temp to 180. So that's what I want a whirlpool at. So that way, if I chill a little bit too much, it'll heat it up. So 180, hit that play button. It's not gonna turn on the elements because we're at like 205 right now. All right, so the cold water is going through our immersion chiller. I got the pump running. 
We're down to 194. Just gonna stir it around here. This helps ch uh, chill it a little bit quicker. 188 and dropping. So you can see that stirring really helps along with the pump going. So I'm going to call that close enough and I'm going to turn the cold water off. And yeah, we're at 178. So again, we were shooting for 180, but that's close enough and the Bruzilla will heat it up to 180 now. So announce to Simcoe. One ounce of Azaka. Mmm, that smells good. There we go. Give that a little stir. And we're gonna let those steep for 20 minutes. So I'm gonna set a timer for 20 minutes and we'll be right back. All right, so we've let our hop steep for 20 minutes. Time to chill again. Turn off the pump. Or sorry, turn off the heat. Not the pump, keep the pump going. Pump has been going this whole time and uh, hook up our uh, cold water again to the chiller. So I'm gonna go turn that on. All right, so we got our cold water flowing through the immersion chiller. We have our pump running. I have my little stirrer here so I can give it a stir every now and then. Just uh, speed up the chill time. We're already down to what, about 152. So yeah, we're just gonna let it go till we get to about, you know, 65. It's the perfect time to start cleaning up your stuff if you haven't already. I'm gonna go empty the grain basket, give it a good rinse down, have a nice cold beer. And uh, once we're ready to transfer the fermenter, we'll be right back. One thing I'll quickly mention, if you order our all grain kits or if you order like a custom all grain recipe from us, you'll get them in a plastic bag like this. So once you get the grains out, you can reuse this for cleaning up. It fits perfectly over the top of the uh, grain basket here. And this is still hot, so if it is, you know, wear some brewery gloves or something like that. Anyway, get it over the top, lift it up. And there you go. Get rid of your grains, uh, put them in your compost or something, give them to a farmer, uh, and that's easy disposal. Yeah, just a quick tip for you. All right, so we are down to just under 64 Fahrenheit. So that's right around where I want to be. I'm going to quickly turn off the pump. Even 63, awesome. I'm going to go turn off our uh, cold water as well. We do not need to chill anymore. So we got our pump turned off. Yep. All right. Try not to get wort all over the place. I got a sanitized paper towel here. All right, just enough tubing to make it. And then we'll just turn it back on. There you go, you can see the pump is flowing perfectly. So even though I added four ounces of hops during the boil with no hop spider or anything, that false bottom's taking care of uh, blocking that. So we're just gonna wait for this fermenter to fill up. Should only take a few minutes. Almost done. All right, so transfer is complete. I'm turning off the pump. One thing I want to mention, I did not tilt this. I did nothing. I let it sit and let the pump run. The uh, the inlet that's at the bottom that used to be kind of on the side is down on the bottom in the middle and it's like concave. So it just gets every drop of wort out. Well, if we come and take a look at the false bottom, look at that. It must have blocked at least 90% of the hops, if not more. So that did a good job. I'm gonna take this out, give it a quick rinse, and then we can see how much wart, if any, is even left in this unit here. So just give me a minute. Okay, so I have the false bottom removed. It's cleaned and put away. Let's take a look at what made it through that false bottom. So there's a little bit in there, some hop chunks, probably some hot break or cold break, but not that much. And there's like maybe a cup of wart in there. I didn't have to tilt this thing. I didn't have to do anything. The false bottom blocked almost everything from getting into our fermenter. 
So that's pretty sweet. You get every last drop out of here. That's pretty much it. That's how you brew on the Brewzilla Gen 4. And if you have any questions, did I miss anything? Is anything unclear? Just leave a question down in the comments down below. Other than that, I'm gonna rinse this thing out with some hot water. I'm gonna run some clean water through the pump and through the recirculation arm, put some hot water with some PBW, you know, maybe two, three gallons, let it recirculate for half an hour just to clean the pump, clean the recirculation arm real good. Give it a rinse and put it away. And that's pretty much it. Thanks a lot. Please like and subscribe if you wanna see more videos like this. Cheers.